And they just they, they take it offshore, and, and you have countries left saddled with debts. Um, recent studies uh, have indicated, in Africa at least, that the private assets, the assets held by Africans, far exceed the debts of African countries. The difference is that the assets are held in private hands. These are assets offshore in, in, in banks overseas. Uh, they could easily pay off the debts. Uh, the income on those assets could easily pay off, uh, you know, all the debt repayments. But we have this mismatch, and, and the burden is that the, the, the debts are borne by the African people in the form of either higher taxes for themselves or degraded public services, and impun an, an elite that, that benefits from complete impunity for what they're doing. The money's offshore. There's, uh, there's nothing that anybody can do about it, and this leads to the corruption of countries and uh, wholesale subversion of democracy. So it's a it's an absolute scourge on developing countries. Global Financial Integrity, which is a Washington think tank, in January estimated that illicit financial flows out of developing countries in 2008. Uh, added up to 1.2 trillion U.S. dollars into tax havens and, and rich world economies. Uh, a lot of that came here into the United States. Uh, a lot of Latin American uh, money comes here. And so the United States itself is a tax haven. The United States has a kind of two-faced problem. One is that it's losing money to, to foreign tax havens, but also it is itself offering secrecy facilities, offering tax-free treatment to foreigners who bring their money here and, and helping foreigners evade taxes and commit crimes. Uh, and one of the arguments, great arguments in my book, is that this money that's coming in does not make for the money, does not make up for the money being lost. Instead, it causes harm. It further puffs up uh, wasteful property bubbles, further puffs up Wall Street, and uh, has contributed even more to this, you know, too big to fail problem, the problem of uh, financial capture of the political process. So we have a double, the, the inflow problem and the outflow problem, both being harmful for the United States, but also for the developing countries. So what do you think? How should this change? I mean, you have this enormous emphasis on the deficit in this country. You say that offshore tax evasion has co cost the United States $100 billion a year. How can we turn this around? Well, as I said, the $100 billion I see is just one part of the picture. Uh, I think that there, are, there is some legislation that, that is coming in to try and crack down on, uh, on uh, this stuff. There was a, a bill originally co-sponsored by um, Barack Obama before he was president, um, and now uh, it, has not, it has not yet passed through. But Senate 11, I believe, is uh, it's called the Stop Tax Haven Abuse Act. Uh, Senate 11 is, uh, I believe, trying to reintroduce this. Um, there is no magic bullet that is going to solve this problem, but there are a series of different measures that um, can be and need to be taken. And the first thing that really has to be done is for people to start to see how big and bad this system has become. become. While people think it's just a few, uh, a few islands out in the Caribbean doing a little bit of tax evasion, I'm not saying $100 billion is just a little bit of tax, tax evasion, but uh, while people still see it as a problem just on that scale, um, there won't be the political momentum for reform. My, one of my central arguments is this is so much bigger and so much badder than uh, almost anybody knows. We need to, as a first step for reform, we need to understand that and spread the message. Well, I mean, you say it was President Obama who was pushing this as senator, but it's the same President Obama who is trying to raise a billion dollars in 2012. What would you say is the single most powerful force that is stopping any kind of crackdown on this? Well, I think, of course, Wall Street uh, banks and financial institutions, uh, which are huge fans of the off offshore system, multinational corporations uh, are able to use the offshore system through, particularly through tax avoidance, um, sending their money offshore, not getting taxed on it until they bring the money back back home. Uh, so they are huge, huge uh, proponents of this of this system. So. Corporate lobby, lobbying power is also a huge part of the problem. Another part of the problem is that there is this kind of self-reinforcing dynamic of the offshore system. When one country cuts its tax rates, its corporation taxes, or it uh, creates a new loophole, others uh, in the game, which are tax havens, which have a business model of being tax havens, then feel they have to keep up and they think, OK, we've got to create an even better loophole. Uh, when one country creates a, a nicely, a very strong form of secrecy, the other countries will say, ah, oh, we've got to create a, an even stronger form. So you have this kind of race to the bottom. Uh, and one of the big effects from a tax point of view, uh, and this also happens with financial regulation, but with, from a tax point of view, what you will get is the tax charge on mobile capital, which is uh, very often the form of 
of in, uh, the, how wealthy people and, and corporations receive receive their in, uh, receive their income and how they're taxed. The tax charge on mobile capital falls. That means somebody else has to pay for the, those taxes that uh, that aren't being paid by the wealthy people and, and corporations. So other people have to pick up the slack. So you get a kind of compression of the tax system because of this dynamic. Uh, so you get uh, ordinary people having to pay more. Uh, in order to pay the taxes that the wealthier people are not paying. And this is a kind of impersonal dynamic that, that is inherent to the offshore system. And uh, one thing that is especially required to deal with that is international cooperation. And I think the United States um, can take a lead, a global lead, and should take a global lead on, on getting cooperation on this kind of problem that is uh, part of the offshore system. And it isn't part of the problem that any uh, talk of reform has to run up against the fact that the international banking system, to one degree or another, benefits from the entire uh, situation of these tax havens? Because I would assume that the, the money is always held in banks, whether it's in the United States or in England or uh, in these other countries. And I would assume that the banks that uh, help, uh, help facilitate uh, this kind of avoidance or evasion are, end up with bigger fees as a result of their extra uh, assistance. Uh, to the holders of these accounts, so that, in essence, the banking system uh, doesn't want to see this changed? No, I think that's probably fairly true to say. Um, we should not underestimate also the lobbying power of the, the, the accounting firms. They are, that's something that people don't really consider. Of course, the banks are huge. The accounting firms, the legal firms that are involved in this are absolutely enormous. Uh, I think one of the, <coughs> one of the uh, things that could be done is to uh, look at ways of having much more severe penalties on people who assist, uh, particularly uh, criminal tax evasion and other uh, other aspects of it. Um, but we also mustn't lose sight of the, the, the financial regulation aspect of this. And when countries like the United Kingdom, uh, but other tax havens like Luxembourg, Ireland, the Netherlands, which are not traditionally regarded as tra tax havens, but they're huge, huge um, players in this business, we must increasingly recognize them as, uh, as engaging in what is nothing short of economic warfare against the United States uh, and, and, and other countries. We really need to start recognizing that this is, uh, you know, this is conflict. This is economic conflict. When one country tries to suck tax, tax revenue or, or illicit flows or whatever out of another country, that is, uh, that is an aggressive act. And we need to uh, start taking much more robust action to defend uh, all of our countries against uh, what's going on in the offshore system. Nicholas, very quickly as we wrap up, um, the two powers, corporate power and grassroots power. On the corporate side, you have people like uh, Rupert Murdoch, uh, who determines much of the debate in this country with his ownership of media. You call him a master of offshore gymnastics. And then you've got the grassroots movements uncut, both in Britain and the United States, this growing movement that's going after tax avoiders. Talk about both. Start with uh, with Rupert Murdoch. Okay, Rupert Murdoch. Uh, now he, uh, the last investigation into his tax affairs I'm aware of is one conducted by the Economist in I think 90, 1998 or 1999. So we don't have very updated data on him, but uh, he had cut uh, his tax rate down to six percent. Uh, when others were paying, you know, much higher rates. Uh, a recent Government Accountability Office report in uh, 2008 estimated that News Corporation has 152 offshore subsidiaries, uh, according to their definition of tax havens. Uh, so he is he is certainly a big player in the game. And and when you have, you know, he's not the only, obviously not the only media player um, using offshore uh, tax havens. It's very widespread. But when you have uh, big players in the game. Uh, defending this, then you have a big problem from the media point of view as well. On the grassroots side, this is incredibly heartening what's been happening. There has been, until I would say a year ago, um, almost complete radio silence on this issue. Very few people were taking an interest in it. Um, we saw, we have seen the, the uncut movement uh, is something that emerges, spontaneous protest against corporate tax avoidance. Uh, in, in my country, in the UK, where there's uh, big spending cuts happening, people turning around saying, how come we're giving these, these effective subsidies to corporations, these tax subsidies to corporations, and, uh, and, and now we're having to cut schools and hospitals? And people are coming out onto the streets. And this is absolutely new, and this is, this is thrilling to see. Uh, and it's happening in the United States. Uh, and stories such as General Electric's uh, ability to, to, to 
get away with paying uh, no tax in the United States is, uh, you know, a catalyst for something. So something very new is happening now, and it's, uh, it's tremendously refreshing. And, and this is, uh, you know, the beginning, I believe, of something much bigger that will, as austerity and deficits uh, continue to bite, will we'll get more people onto the streets. We have video of, uh, of the protesters, the uncut folks in uh, the United States holding up Treasure Islands, your book. Nicholas Jackson, we want to thank you very much for being with us, author of Treasure Thanks Islands, uncovering much. the damage of offshore banking and tax havens. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. When we come back, as we move in